Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 9 Domain Fairy Tales. Here's Hansel and Gretel, Part 1. Our fantasy and reality chart. Here's the picture we're looking at. It's a picture of a royal family. Is a royal family something that's imagined or can be a real event or situation? A royal family can be a real event or situation. We will continue to add more images to this chart with, with each fairy tale that we hear. Today's story, Hansel and Gretel, we want to listen to find out what problem Hansel and Gretel have and how they try to solve the problem. Listen to see if we can understand the word comforted. Once upon a time, near a deep, dark forest, there lived a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children. The boy was named Hansel and the girl named Gretel. The family never had very much to eat. And now when times were hard, people around the land were starving and the poor woodcutter could not get enough food to feed his family. As he lay in bed one night, tossing and turning with worry, he turned to his wife and said, what is going to happen to us? How can we feed our poor children when we haven't got enough for ourselves? His wife is unkind and cold hearted. And she responded by saying, listen to me early tomorrow morning. We'll take the children deep into the woods. We'll give each of them a piece of bread and make a fire. Then we'll leave them and go about our work. When it's time for dinner, we will be home and we'll eat their share. They won't find the way home in time for dinner. No, said the man, I cannot do that. I cannot leave my children alone in the woods where there are wild animals. It will get dark and cold as the sun sets. Then you are a fool, snapped the woman. You might as well accept that we will all starve. Then she kept at the poor man until at last he agreed. But I feel sorry for my poor children, he said quietly. The two children were so hungry that they had not been able to sleep. And so they heard everything their stepmother had said to their father. Gretel cried, but Hansel whispered, don't worry, I will think of something. And when their parents had gone to sleep, Hansel got up, put on his little coat and sneaked outside. The moon was shining brightly and the white pebbles that lay on the front of the house glittered like silver coins, which means the pebbles sparkled. Hansel stooped and filled the pockets of his coat with as many pebbles as it would hold. Then he tiptoed back to bed and said to Gretel, go to sleep, my little sister. At daybreak, the woman came and woke the two children. Get up, you lazy bones. We're going to the forest to get some wood. She gave them each a piece of bread and said, that's your food for the day. Don't eat it all at once because it is all you are going to get. We will have supper after we return from the woods. That is, if you are home in time. Gretel carried both pieces of bread in her apron for Hansel's pockets were full of pebbles. They all started out on their way to the forest. As they walked, Hansel kept turning around and looking back at the house again and again. His father said, Hansel, what are you looking at? You must watch where you are going. Oh, 
I'm just looking at my little white kitten sitting on the roof of the house to say goodbye. The wife said, you little fool, that's not your kitten. That's just the sun shining on the chimney. Now come along. But Hansel stayed a few steps behind and kept turning. And with each time he turned, he dropped a pebble from his pocket to mark the way. When they were deep in the forest, the father said, gather some firewood, children. I'll start a fire so you won't get cold while we work. Hansel and Gretel gathered a little mountain of twigs and sticks. And when the fire was burning, the wife said, stay by the fire, you two. We have to go and cut wood. When we're finished, we'll come back to get you. So Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire. After a time, they ate their bread. And after a longer time, they got so tired that they closed their eyes and fell asleep. When they woke, it was dark and they were all alone. Gretel began to cry, but Hansel comforted her, trying to make her feel better. Wait until the moon rises, he said. When the full moon had risen, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which glittered like silver coins and showed them the way. They walked on through the night and at last, at the break of day, they came to their father's house. They knocked on the door and when the woman opened it, she was shocked. But all she said was, why, there you are. Why did you stay so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming home again. Of course, their father was glad to see them, for it had broken his heart to leave them alone. Not very long afterward, times were hard again, and there was little food to eat. Again, the children heard their stepmother say to their father one night, there's nothing left but a half a loaf of bread. And after that, we're done. We don't have enough food for ourselves and the children. This time, we'll take them so deep in the forest that they won't find their way back for a week. But wife, said the man with a heavy heart, it would be better to share our last bite of food with the children. But the wife would not listen to him, and she knew if she kept at him, she could get him to give in and agree with her plan as he did before. Much later, when their parents were asleep, Hansel got up to collect pebbles just as he did before, but he couldn't get out. His stepmother had figured out how they found their way home last time and had locked the door. So Hansel got back into bed and tried to think of a different plan. Early the next morning, the woman roused the children out of bed. She gave them a piece of bread even smaller than before. As they walked into the woods, Hansel broke up the bread in his pocket and every once in a while he stopped to throw a crumb on the ground. Hansel, said his father, why do you keep stopping and looking back for? I'm looking at the little pigeon that's sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me, Hansel said. Little fool, said the wife, that's not a pigeon. It's only the sun shining on the chimney. So they walked on and Hansel dropped breadcrumbs all along the way. The woman led the children deeper into the forest than they had ever been in all their lives. Again, they gathered sticks for a fire and the woman said, sit there children, and when you are tired, go to sleep. We're going to cut wood and when we're finished, we'll come and get you. Later, when it was lunchtime, Gretel shared her small piece of bread with Hansel because he had left his in crumbs along the path. Then they fell asleep. 
As evening came, no one came to get them. When they woke, it was dark and they were alone. When the moon rose, they started for home, but they could not find the breadcrumbs. The birds had eaten them up. Come, Gretel, said Hansel. I know we can find our way, but they couldn't find it. They went all night and the next day from morning until evening, but they could not find their way out of the forest. They were terribly hungry for they had nothing to eat but a few berries. When they were so tired that they could drag themselves no further, they lay down under a tree and fell asleep. What do you think is going to happen next in our story? It is time to make a prediction. What is going to happen to Gretel and Hansel? Will their father and stepmother come back to get them? Make your predictions. We will finish our story the next time we are together.